Welcome to episode 13 of the Living Memory Association podcast. My first job is the theme of this edition, where we look back to that first momentous step into employment between the 1930s and the 1970s. From Crawford's the Baker to CNA, Timothy White's and Taylor's the Chemist and Woolworth's, to earning eight shillings for a week's work on the steam hammer at Brown Brothers. Back in time we go. When I was coming up to leave the school, I had five job offers on the table. You know, and you took your pick. It wasn't, yes, you know, yes, they exactly. didn't choose who they wanted. Yeah. You know, you went for the interviews, yeah. then they would write out to you saying, we're pleased to say we can offer you this job. And, well, I wasn't 15 until the August, so I left school in the June. So they all knew that I couldn't start until that date in August. And I chose to go to D.S. Crawford's, the Bakers, as an office junior. And they were up at McDonald Road, just down for Brown Brothers. They sat at the back of Claremont Court, that, that is there now, it wasn't there then. And that's where their bakehouse was. How much was your first wage, Jim? Three pound a week. And how much of that did you keep? One pound ten. Right, 30 okay. shillings. So, my mother oh. got 30 shillings. But she gave me my bus fares every day. And I didn't need lunch money because you just went through the bakery of course, and got yeah. what you wanted. And my main job was, we had umpteen shops through East Lothian, all the Edinburgh, we had restaurants in the town and you used to have to make up the order on a daily basis. Or well, you'd make it up the day before and then it would go through to the bake. And it was sheets, maybe about the size of the, the pictures, that would be divided into like six and it would be from Petty Fours for the oh, restaurants, yeah. you know, and it was savouries, biscuits, wow. cakes, mm. pies, and there was a special board you had to fold all the orders, and I think then it was 38 shops I was doing. I used to feed it all on the first page, and you had a huge ruler, and you sat at your machine, and you went right along line for line, adding it up, transferring it to the master copy. So it had to be accurate, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they would overproduce, yeah. or underproduce. Yeah. It would go through, next morning it would all be made on the big baker's boards, right. loaded into all the back of their vans, Oh to shops. It's a hell of an operation. It's almost like a military. Oh, it was. Of... It was. It was. It was full on. Um, what, year, what year was that, Maureen? 1963. How many years were you there? Just two years. Uh, My first job when I was 14. It was a Saturday job, and I worked in Woolworths. They sold all kinds of domestic things and mm -hmm. food and small items like do-it-yourself items, mm -hmm. the screws and hammers and nails and stationery. And just a, I suppose a little bit like what the pound shops are now, yeah. but maybe a wee bit more upmarket than that. I used to work there on a Saturday afternoon when I was 14, and I remember what I got paid. I got paid yeah. eight shillings in pre-decimal money. That's now worth 40 pence. Oh. <laughs> but it was OK. It was an OK wage then. I think I worked two till six, so that would be two shillings an hour. I was a joiner to start with, but I, was, I finished up, I was a, after I come back for the war, come back the first time for the, uh, I went back to my trade as a joiner. See, the firms, they had to take you back, because you're, with being underage, you, you hadn't done your full apprenticeship, you see. Yeah. I think I'd done three years and then I was away. So they had to take you back to, to make, I can't remember if it was a year or two years, but they had to take you back, and uh, you went back and you, you started your time again. So I went back to Scott Morton where I'd served my time, you know, and it was it was good. Oh, I've been around. I was at, and then I took after that. Uh, I was in, I was supposed to be two years. I was with him ten years. First job. First I, job. I trained after leaving school physiotherapy, and that was my first job. At boarding school, you had to take it in turns to go down to the dairy or the shop to bring back the milk mm. for the whole boarding school or or bread. Take two of us mm -hmm. to do it, not to the shoppy bit. Did you get any? Did you eat any when you were coming back? Of the boat? How did it be counted? Oh, right. My first job was when I was at the, still at the school and part time, obviously. And I used to go around on a Friday night and a Saturday morning for the Labour Party sweep, which was a sort of a, like a wee raffle thing that oh. people paid into, and then there was a there was a draw, and people won things. And, and if somebody on your run 
one something, uh -huh. you usually go a wee tip, which usually gave you an extra. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, it was a wee tip because uh, you were the one that came yes. round with the with the sweet. So that was right. the. And if they weren't in on the Friday night, you'd take it back again on the Saturday morning. Uh -huh. And you actually did get a pay. You, know, you get paid to do it, right. and you sometimes got a tip if you had um, if somebody on your run won. Did that happen? Oh uh -huh. yeah, there was, a, there was a there was quite a lot of prizes. It was like a twenty five pound prize, a yeah. fifteen, a ten. Oh. A five and lots of ones. Crawford's Biscuit Factory in Elm Street down in Leith, and I lived in George Boyd Bridge at the time with an aunt and uncle. It was quite a way down there. Yes, I used to get the tram down, you know, I, yeah. back and forth. The old trams, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> well, I was born in 1925, so. <laughs> so what, how old were you when you started? 14, work? that was my first job. Right, so that was 1939. That's, that's right, right, yes, I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, war just broke out when you come out the convent. I, I went to the school when I first came out of the convent, you know. We came out in the June and the war started in September, the 6th, 5th of September, 6th of September. I was still at the school because I was back here to Hoyk with my aunt and her two boys, you know, yes. then. And uh, so when I started in, the, I must have been 14 yeah, when the time I started in Crawford's Biscuit yeah. Factory, you so know. What, I, eh? what did mean? you do? What was your job in there? Tinned the biscuits, you know, put them into the tins and oh. whatnot. And, and even uh, taking them off when they were just made and whatnot, taking off the big tree, you know, and mm -hmm. sorting the them out, you know. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Did you get any free biscuits? Oh, yes, yeah. aye. Aye, you got the... Every Friday, I think, you can get some biscuits, you know, aye. They were good to you that way, you know, aye. Yeah. But I enjoyed it there right enough, you know, but... I was very green, I never knew nothing because I'd been in a convent for four years and it was only, I, I was not even school age when I came out, no. you know, I... You realise even... if you'd stayed in the convent, the war would never have broken out. <laughs> <laughs> and when you got your wage, Helen, how much of it did you keep? I always just got half a crown from my auntie. I right. saved my auntie and my uncle who were my, bro my mother's brother and sister. They weren't right. married or nothing, you see. They were brother and sister to my mum, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I stayed with them, but when we came out of the convent, it was me and my sister and two wee brothers. Mm. And the very youngest one was adopted by an aunt down in England. Oh, right. And the, the youngest boy, was he went to stay with my dad, mm. and so did Maury. She was a wee bit older than me, but when I stayed in George Ford Bridge with my aunt and uncle, in the posh house, you know, and I knew my own okay. house was just a pokey George hole. <laughs> Bridge, that's uh -huh. So I liked to stay in George Ford Bridge, posh and whatnot. Oh, you know. listen to you. <laughs> Nothing but the best. <laughs> No, well, obviously, no. <laughs> Good for you. My first job, and it, it was work, it was a Saturday job, but also after school, when I was at primary school, because my dad had a, a flower business, artificial flowers, that he made himself, didn't buy them in anywhere, and my mum uh, and me, and um, we made the flowers, and he sold them in a wee garage down Bread Street. And we say it was a garage, but it was kind of like a, a, a wee lock-up sort of place, quite small. And right in the corner, it had a, a stove. It was a proper stove, it burned wood. And that's where we used to wax the flowers in a jug. Put a big block of wax and heat it up. You wouldn't get away with that now. No, no, <laughs> you, you used to do it in the house most of the time. I know, I think yeah. that's how our, my younger brother had such bad asthma. Mm -hmm. So he would melt this wax and he'd have the, carnation, the carnations, the carnations, the roses, mm. chrysanthemums, mm. Um, usually roses and carnations. Sometimes daffodils he would make, and he um, oh, would uh, take each individual flower, twirl it, dip it into the wax, twirl it really, really fast, whip it out, and the other one, whip it, oh and it was God, the God. heat of the wax and the speed, so it never got like a wax look. Oh, right. It coated the crepe paper oh. so that the longer lasting. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I worked there up until about. 12, but I never got a wage. I was going to say. I never <laughs> got a wage. I, I think it's called wage. slave labour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just family, <coughs> family, family business. business. Although when you say family business, you kind of think something where there's a bookkeeper and a secretary yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. It was nothing like that. It was a cottage industry. <laughs> <laughs> and the flowers were made in the house in a room and kitchen mm. in Dundee Place. That's where we made them, mm. in the kitchen, which was a living room. It was a big, a biggish kitchen. Was in so what was your first uh, paying paper job. job? Paper round, um, up Marchmont. But first proper job when I left school, 15, was in Timothy White's and Taylor's, the chemist in Princess Street. Oh. And I really enjoyed that. Right. I really enjoyed that. Well, I wanted to be an air hostess, and the careers officer said, well, you're good with people. Why don't you work in a shop? <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> quite the same, is it? <laughs> Not at all. However, that was that was my first oh. job. Timothy White's and Taylor's on the counter. Yeah. And what do you remember what your wage would have been? Yeah, for the first year three pounds seven shillings and six pence. Yeah. And seven and six went on your stamp. I don't think I paid any tax on that, but seven and six was your insurance stamp, so it was three pound. And mum got one pound fifty and I got one pound fifty. And off the one pound fifty I had to buy tights or stockings as it was then, bus fares, lunches. You were paid weekly. Right. So by Wednesday you had nothing less, so you're walking to work. And you had probie checks in those days. Oh. So provident checks. Oh, nice. <laughs> so when I left school I didn't have any clothes to, to go right. to, to work. So I got a twenty pound probie check. But I got a coat, a skirt, blouse, <laughs> shoes. A bag. I've got such a lot of that £20 provy check. Wow. Uh, and explain a provy check. How did that work? I think it's it's worse now, but then it was quite a good deal. You would, there'd be an agent would come round the houses, and it was tenements. So the agent would come round, and we were on a top flat at Dundee Place, and it would have several customers in this two stairs in the street, and several customers in the stair, quite high. And you would pay... It would give you a sort of chitty thing. It wasn't twenty pounds you got. All oh, right. It was a card thing, and there were certain participating stores. Jane R. Allen's and the Bridges was one of them. They were great, and there was another one in Errol Grey Street, where I got my skirt actually, a grey skirt with a wee black. That was really nice, and a white blouse with black, because that was the style with the flouncy sleeves. Oh. Um, so it all kind of matched for work. So you got this little card. Um, which was your Provi check voucher, and you would give the agent two pounds for the first week. A pound went to the Provi company or to the agent. Maybe you got a commission. I don't know. That went. So you were paying two pounds, but you were actually only paying one pound for your first Provi check payment, and one pound went to the agent. And then every week you pay a further pound. So I had about ten shillings a week for stockings, bus fares, lunches. Yeah, wow. I was slim then. <laughs> I walked a lot and I ate little. <laughs> you couldn't afford to. But, you know, I mean, everybody, most people didn't have a lot of money and no, no. the music was really good and you mm -hmm. just you just had a nice time. Dance halls weren't the expensive. The music was good too. Yes, I. Mm -hmm. And you'd walk through the gardens or you'd walk in the museum. If you're working in a shop, you'd probably have to do Saturdays, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, yeah. Monday to Saturday with a half day and a Wednesday. Finished at one o'clock. Monday to Saturday, nine o'clock till six o'clock, and the, the three pound a week. And then when you got to 16, it went up to three pound 15 shillings. That was for the girls. The men got more. Ooh. I think they got five pound a week. Yeah, me got three pound. That's seven, quite a seven, difference, three. isn't it? But you did, it was a nice atmosphere. You all kind of mucked in. There's lots of Saturday girls came in, and that was nice as well. Um, it made a Saturday kind of a sort of carnival, holiday, oh, yeah. festival atmosphere because there was all these youngsters. They were talking about staying on at high school or going to university or whatever. I thought, I would, I would really like to have done that. But the eldest and then kids. Yeah. yeah. I progressed from working the half Saturday, Saturday afternoon. When I was 15 or 16, I started to work a whole day Saturday and then I got paid 16 shillings, which seemed like, well... And you had to pay threepence for your insurance stamp. But then I continued, I was still at school then, I continued to do that. When I was 17, I started to take driving lessons, but the driving lessons cost 15 shillings, and I only earned 16 shillings minus the stamp, insurance stamp. So I was dependent on my mum for money to buy stockings and makeup and things like that. And then you had at least one person on each counter. Yeah, at least one person on each counter, and there was cosmetic counters. I was on the, the medicines, and I was quite good at selling. Yeah, I was quite good at selling, yeah. I used to keep me on the counter. Oh, right. But I liked doing the stock, because ah. <laughs> there was chance for banter and, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. John! What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> what was your first job? Delivery milk. Milk boy. And was that before school? Well, at school. Yeah, yeah, so that would be early morning. Yes. And were you OK about getting up early? Or? Oh, yes, no bother. And was that up and down the, the stairs to the well, tenements? The tenements uh, for, for the school, for the way to school, you know. And did you do that five, six days a week? Uh, yes. Right, so you did Saturday as well? I think so. You must have been loaded. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Not at that time. No. 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 You didn't get paid much. 
No. Oh, uh, really? Did you get any extra money at Christmas? Did people... No. Really? No. no. But did the people in the tenements give you any extra money? Oh, what a mean lot. Mean a lot, eh? <laughs> God. So you'd pick up the e empty bottles and bring yes. them. Did you find anyone ever peeing in the empty bottles? <laughs> no. That's Leith. <laughs> no, no uh, Leith. Really? <laughs> That's the legend. Somebody told me that sometimes you'd pick up the bottles oh, and there was a bit of heat. <laughs> well, no, I never got that. Uh, no. no. Did you ever drop any? Oh, yes. I... <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you didn't get any tips? <laughs> I remember that I dropped a paint. <laughs> I've got a paint in the dock landing. I've got a waterfall. Oh, no. <laughs> I worked in CNA modes as an alteration hand, an apprentice alteration hand. We had to actually work in the shop on sales and at sale time and go down to the shops, you know, and sell, sell right. things. I hated it. Hated selling. Did you? <laughs> um, so you're behind the scenes? I like behind the scenes, yeah. They had a fire in CNAs, a yes. great big fire, and yeah. it, burnt, yes. it was burnt to the ground. And we all got moved to Frederick Street, mm. and we're all still working for CNAs. They were a very good firm to were work they? for. Right. Oh. They paid us all the time. We were, we were all out of work. It, it was in the evening, you know, and it, that's when it burnt down, you know. And how old were we when you started? Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. And had you in it had any job when you were in school? Uh, just paper rounds, paper rounds, you know. And I wanted to go to art college. Oh, really? That's what I had fancied, you know, because I was good at art in, in at school, you know. I was refused. I was the wanted the money, you know, so yeah. you could go to art college, mm -hmm. you know. And your wages, how much of it did you keep, and how much did you hand over? Well, I got two pounds seven and six was my first wage. I really had handed most of it over, you know. To I'm your mum? And my dad. Right. My dad, he was a drinker, so he drunk it all away, you know. What yeah. was your first job when you left school? Hammer boy, Brown Brothers, Steam Hammers, they made chips, parts. Okay. That's, 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 that's what I did. How old were you? Fourteen. But there were three, three hammers, two big ones and a wee one. <laughs> And you had the wee one, did you? No, 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 I had the big, oh. the big one. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so at 14, you were in charge of this big steam hammer? Aye, so it's all the way now. Aye. Who was it, John? Good, good. Pulled the guy. Hilrig. And was it noisy, job? Oh, aye. Yeah, <laughs> be a lot of hammering all round you. <laughs> you wouldn't have any ear protection, would no, you? No, we didn't, no. No. We didn't, we should bong, bong, bong. <laughs> Did you wear any gloves or anything? No. I just went out. <laughs> 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 oh, you've got a pair of boots. Oh, well, I've got boots all the way. I just buy them myself. I wonder how much money you got for a week's work. Eight shillings. Eight shillings. Eight shillings. And that would have been in... 1939. All your wages go back to your mum and dad? No, not really, no, no. You no. had some? No, I, I, I had pocket, pocket money for that. Mm. And you didn't enjoy it very much, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so how long were you there? Well, about uh, three years and that, because they had to uh, wait in the plenty ship and the pit floor. So I had to do a, a year working on the shelves. You'd be relieved to get out? I was, I was, I was I suppose. But what year did, was it you started work? Oh, well, when I was 15, uh, so it would be... I was born in 1939, so count that out. <laughs> right, so, what was it, 56? I bet that, in the yeah. 50s. Yeah. yeah. And did you stay there long? I stayed about 10 years there. Oh, right. Yeah. I was a model there as well at one oh, time. Oh, <laughs> Just they had a mannequin parades and uh, oh, ideal, ideal home uh, exhibition. Wow. In the Waverley Market. Yeah, and you yeah. were modelling there. And there was modelling there at one point. Uh, they used to have this exhibition, uh, the pictures, uh, the youngster, youngsters, yeah. you know, that were... Uh, Do you remember what you wore? Nothing really. Very stunning. I didn't like it very oh, much. You've got to say nothing and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Helen, behave. I'm, like, I'm not going with that. <laughs> My second job, the first job I wasn't sacked from, was in the delicatessen at Safeway at Pierce Hill. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. 
mainly selling cheese. Wow. I was telling John, I used to keep myself entertained at the deli by, I'd, I'd have a competition with other members of staff to see who could get the most cheesy bang-ons. A cheesy bang-on is when someone would ask for four ounces of cheese. You'd have to oh, cut it to exactly four ounces yeah. to bang on the weight. Because sometimes you'd have to say it's a wee bit under or it's a wee bit over mm -hmm. uh -huh. and the customer would usually go, oh, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, you get one point for a cheesy bang-on. And like cheddar being square is very easy to cut, yes. but Edam is tricky, very tricky yeah. to get a cheesy bang on for Edam. Once again, that's quite an insight into the world of cheese. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> and not just perhaps too much. Yeah. Yes. Uh, did you ever get anyone saying, no, I want exactly if you got oh, one? Oh, yes. yes. Really? Yes, yeah. Because it was a bit. You used to get around if you had lots of little bits left. Yeah. Somebody says, no, take it off. Oh. Oh. Had a little bit left. Yeah, and even people would people would order things like slices of ham. By some people would say, "Can I have three slices?" Yes. Yes. Some people would say, "Can I have a pound a or a quarter?" Mm -hmm. And it would be, "But is that th three slices just over?" No, 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 two slices. You have to put it back. So mm -hmm. People were quite strict about how much they spent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. well, and, and could you alter the thickness of the slices? Was that another? No, the slicing machine was terrifying. Do you have us? Just for the big sort of ham things that you had to slice yourself, it was just terrifying because you had to push it. Yeah, you had to push it towards the big slicer, and it was always uh, was never my favourite job. Was there a guard to stop your hand? There was, but some of the more overconfident members of staff wouldn't bother putting the guard on. Yes, yes, yes. It actually sounds more dangerous than the steam hammer. <laughs> the bike, like, in a oh, way. Yes. Well, happy yes. memories of my Safeway days. Same hammer, you're, you're so vain. There we are. Well, bacon slices, you were right in there in the action. You were lucky. Three years with a steam hammer, that was nothing. And then at the end of the night, when the vans used to come back in with the bread boards, would be the leftovers. And they would go, you finished your work, and you would go through. There'd be a pile of bags and you used to just nice. help yourself. Oh, nice. And of course, I used to get the 35 bus for there home to uh -huh. um, the toppy Bangor Road. And I mean, there was nights I couldn't get on the bus by the amount of bags. My goodness. <laughs> what a bonus. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, I used to run up and down the stair giving it out to yeah. everybody, you know. Oh, there was so much. I you're about to see some people's bacon. You know, like people that were hungry, because yes. yeah. those were tough days. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much to Maureen, Jackie, Evelyn, Wynne, Helen, Rose, Willie, May and the two Johns for their fabulous memories of first jobs, remembered through the mists of time. If you have a story to tell, please pop in and see us at the Little Shop of Memory in Ocean Terminal Leith or at our new branch in West Lothian. You can also follow us on Twitter at Thelma Scotland and you can catch up with our events on Facebook or have a look at our great videos and wonderful photos on our YouTube channel by searching for the Living Memory Association. Until next time, we bid you farewell.